Hello and welcome to another episode of Starfield Chat? Question mark. Yeah, um, our, our ongoing adventures in Starfield. But yeah, this is an episode of Starside Chat. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Aaron, and with me as always is Zach. How's it going, Zach? Good. I'm excited to kind of really start deep diving into Starfield and everything that's yes. going on. I have only played about uh, six and a half hours. Basically, I've I've been doing a lot of mainline quest things because I wanted to get to a certain point. And you, I think, have played much more. Do you have an hour count off the top of your head? Uh, no. I well, also, I never trust my in-game save file because I have a tendency mm-hmm. to like hit pause and walk away for extended periods of time because I yeah. know I'm eventually coming back to it, and I don't want to deal with like booting it up and like loading the quick resume or whatever but um i would say it's definitely over 24 hours probably around 30 yeah. ish hours maybe but i had like the full three day labor day weekend to also like die true yeah you game, bought it so. you got the uh premium edition where you could play it early i just started playing it on i briefly played it on Wednesday night when it became available at 7 p.m. And I like made my character and that was pretty much it. And then Thursday, I played a good amount. Friday, I only played for like maybe two hours. And then yesterday, I only played for like maybe less than an hour just to like uh, walk around a little bit. Yeah, I- I'm curious to hear uh, which quest lines you've already sort of gotten into. I am also chomping at the bit to talk about this, but before we do, we have a couple news items. Yeah, so uh, first up, uh, Final Fantasy 16 is apparently going to get two paid DLCs and a PC port. Uh, this was uh, shared on Twitter the other day. I think uh, Yoshi P was uh, doing some sort of uh, like video or an interview of some sort. I don't exactly know what was going on with this, but... Uh, He says that they're working on two installments of paid DLC and that there's a PC version that's coming before the end of the year. So not too far away on that, Uh, which is cool because Final Fantasy 16 was very good. Do you think you'll pick these uh, DLCs up? I don't know. We we were talking a little bit before the podcast uh, about the cyberpunk DLC that's coming up at the end of the month and I'm just like so bad at like yeah. returning to games to play DLCs like I never played the Horizon Forbidden West one that came out earlier this year that I think uh, got like pretty good reviews but well uh, I mean in addition to the like content there's also I think this coincides with like the whole overhaul of a bunch of systems in cyberpunk like they're actually police now in cyberpunk and mods do different things like you have i think you have the ability to have cyber psychosis now like there's a, apparently it's like a whole engine overhaul almost of the cyberpunk system yeah they're yeah they're calling it like a 2.0 update yeah. and that is free so you don't have to like pay for that big dlc pack to get access to that so that's i'm interested cool. i famously played it on uh stadia and i never I like a hundred percented it pretty much on Stadia. Um, so I didn't really, I, I knew there was going to be DLC, but I sort of was like, I don't really care about grabbing my save data. And so I didn't. So if I, if I do want to check this out again, I would have to play from the beginning, but that is a little bit enticing to me because I did really love that game. And I think I would go a different like skill tree path than I did previously. But yeah, I don't know if I'm going to check it out either. I it, it looks great. I have to say it looks yeah, really cool. It does seem very cool. And I did really like that game. So I wouldn't be opposed to like jumping back in, especially with like a bunch of new content and stuff to kind of like get into and sort of see some of that 2.0 update. But uh, and, and I will say like playing a lot of Starfield has like made me think of cyberpunk for a lot yeah. of different reasons, especially like whenever you're on neon, uh, but also just like it kind of feels somewhat similar in like the shooter mechanics. Like I I feel like uh, both of those games have like really solid shooting mechanics, not like to the level of something like destiny or call of duty, but like still pretty rock solid in their own. Right. This is a little bit kind of like a, a DLC heavy news cycle because not to jump around in our show notes too much, but Nintendo confirmed this week that there won't be any DLC for Tears of the Kingdom. They have said they 
have done all they want to do with this iteration of Hyrule, and they're already thinking about the next game, their ideas for the next game. Were you surprised at all about that? I was. I was so sure. Because, I mean, fam- like, uh, Breath of the Wild had, like, three DLCs, I think. Maybe it only had two. But, I mean, they were extensive, and they were all great. Like, I... Similar to you, I don't play a lot of DLCs. I, I find that I am finished with the game and I don't go back. But I did for Breath of the Wild, and the like Trials of the Master Sword DLC was excellent. And um, I don't really remember the other one too much, but the Trials of the Master Sword... I played both of them, but the Trials of the Master Sword one was the one where I was like, man, this is great. And it was kind of a blueprint for parts of Tears of the Kingdom, because there are those great shrines in Tears of the Kingdom where you start with nothing and you sort of have to build your way up. And that's basically what Trials of the Master Sword was, is kind of a tower that you're climbing and you're collecting stuff as you go along. But um, yeah, we're not going to get anything, I guess, for Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, I never did go back and play the DLCs for Breath of the Wild. Speaking of, you know, me being bad at returning to games for DLC, but uh, I am a little bit, surprised i guess that they're not even doing one but i guess like it being so close to the end of the life cycle for the switch like who knows when they'd be able to actually release it and would we be already like on the verge of nintendo like super nintendo switch or whatever the next gen console is going to be because there there were some rumors there uh recently about the next switch yes supposedly developers have been shown this this switch hardware this this uh target hardware for the switch and some pretty crazy rumors actually like i i read that and mold this is from multiple sources i read that that uh unreal engine 5 that matrix whatever awakening demo is running on that software which is kind of crazy yeah, I haven't really looked into these because uh, I've been so like head down on like Starfield this whole yeah. time, this whole last week. But yeah, I think it's so rumored to come out like next fall, like end of next year, fall. Yeah, and it's I mean that that I mean, did you play around at all with that uh, Matrix demo where you're flying around the city? No, I saw some of it. It did look really cool. It's just like like. I don't know. It makes me dream of what like the next GTA game is going to look like. But yeah, because also they said that it was another thing. Another rumor that I heard is that they had Breath of the Wild running on it, but it was like a much higher fidelity Breath of the Wild. So that's also their speculation that there will be some form of backwards compatibility. Um, Yeah. Yeah. I do remember hearing that, that people were talking about backwards compatibility and that maybe it would use like a different cartridge type to like what the current switch has but that it would still like the your previous games would still be compatible so maybe it is like kind of what we talked about that one time when they had like all these switch rumors where we talked about there just being an additional slot or the slot would be designed in some way that it would fit both like the new cartridges and the the past gen cartridges I would love that. Or it's like a micro SD card where you can put it into mm. like an ST card. Some sort of adapter. Thing. <laughs> yeah. And you slot that in. I would love that. I mean, I'm, I'm pro them having larger cartridges that can contain more stuff on them. You know, that would yeah. be cool. Cause I forget what's the like file size, the maximum file size for a switch cartridge. It's like something crazy small, isn't it? I don't remember. I think there are like multiple SKUs, like depending on like how much the developer wants to pay on cartridges. I think there's like some smaller ones depending on like the size of your game. Now, uh, something else I heard ones. is this maybe will have a camera. Yeah, I mean, they did that with the 3DS. They had like some sort of weird like AR support that you could do, and they yeah. had like these little cards that you could use. It was weird. I, I, like was working at a like locally owned like video game buy sell trade store at the time and it came out i was like this is really weird uh and interesting but also like if i owned this i would never use this (laughs) (laughs) so i don't know maybe they're trying to bring back some of the features that people are sad that like were absent in the jump from the 3ds to the switch because I know people like really like that um, 
what was that called? It was like some sort of like pass thing where like if you were out in public and you happen to have oh, your switch street on pass. street pass, that's what it was where you could like sort of add people uh, and you had like, it was like a friends list or something like that. I don't know. It's I never, interesting I never got into that. <laughs> because I mean, at this point I assume it's still going to be hybrid where like you can slot it into a TV in some way. And yeah. then you're also going to be taking it around. But that makes me wonder where the camera would be because if someone is going to play it only on their TV, does that mean they would put the camera in the controller in the Joy-Con somehow so that if you want to use the camera, it's integrate? Or is it a connect t- style thing where the camera's in the dock and like the dock is always watching you and you like wave your hands around? <laughs> yeah, they had some sort of like sensor for the Wii that was like separate to the console itself that you had to plug in and you would like stick it on top of your TV so it could like yeah. read your Wii emotes that you were like waving around your by. IR black you know you can use candles for that really <laughs> yeah I saw a thing because all they are are blasting like IR light and so I saw a video of a guy being like hey if you lost your Wii uh, like IR bar or whatever it's called all you gotta do is te- set two candles up under your TV at this exact point uh, and then it'll act like those little IR lights and it'll like track your Wiimote. Huh. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Because it could be like a thing where maybe like the the Switch Pro controller of the future has like some weird camera technology mm. in it. But it could also be like a separate sensor of some sort. But I'm so curious to know. And we probably... I mean, if it's coming out next fall... I wonder if we would see anything at next year's Summer Games Fest um, or yeah. if they're just going to like, you know, a month out, be like, hey, guess what? Here's this pre-order now. I feel, yeah, I feel like they would probably want the pre-orders to happen earlier than that. So maybe they would do like Summer Games Fest or they could do like a even a spring direct of some sort where they like yeah. sort of show off the new hardware. Which, speaking of directs, I've heard some rumors that this coming week there's supposedly going to be a direct, according to a developer um, that has been right about stuff before. And usually uh, Nintendo does do a, like a mid-September direct, so we might yeah. get a direct this week. Yeah, they have a tendency to announce them like the day before, so <laughs> we'll yeah. find out, I'm sure, like later on. It'll probably it'll probably be announced the day this podcast goes up. So we'll be like, well, why didn't you cover this direct? <laughs> um, yeah. So another thing I saw this week was that that game Stray, the cat game, is getting an animated film adaptation. Do you think the cat will talk in the adaptation? That's a good question. Will it be like kind of like a silent movie, basically? But well. I mean the the robots all talk to you, and the your little flying around guy in your backpack talks to you all the time. Maybe so they'll it cast. Could be, maybe they'll cast Chris Pratt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. I I don't know that I'm super excited. I love you know famously I I like cats. I have a cat. I'm very into cats. But um, Stray was fine. I didn't really enjoy the ending of it, uh, yeah. and I thought that maybe it could have been twice as long and i would have enjoyed it more the the novelty here was playing as a pretty realistic looking and feeling cat yeah uh, to this it was not like ooh, this story in this world i really need to get into this and would love like an extended universe of some sort (laughs) so i don't know it's interesting i i hope that they develop the story a little more and it changes because like I mean, I, we can talk a little bit about spoilers, I guess, because it's been out for a while. But you start the game as like a pack of cats. You have a little family and it's great. And then you get separated from that family. And I feel that it should have ended with you being reunited with your family. Yeah. Uh, but that did not happen. You sort of just kind of walk out into the wilderness and who knows what's going to happen to you, which is fine, I guess, if you're maybe planning a second game or something. Yeah. But I don't know that we're ever going to get a stray too. So... I would have liked uh, a little reunion at the end of that game. Yeah, I mean, if nothing else, it would have been nice to have reunited with your family of cats. But yeah, I mean, we talked about this when we initially talked about Stray. It it almost opens the door for a second one. 
uh, some sort of continuing adventure, but um, I I don't know if that's in the works. It's crazy because it took so long to come out. I feel like I saw the first trailer for it years before it came out, and it's such a short game. So, like, I don't really know. I, 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 I'm I not a game developer, so who knows the troubles they ran into when they were developing this game, but I don't know. I, I feel like it should not take that long <laughs> to <laughs> make this game or a sequel to this game. But Especially maybe now line. that they, like, have sort of the the sort of you know building blocks for this game and they could just like make create more content for it yeah but i'm surprised they haven't announced a sequel like if that's their intent it should have happened by now i feel like yeah you would think it's been out long enough that they probably could announce uh some sort of uh if not a full-on sequel at least like some sort of dlc but nothing yet um i don't know let's get into the games that are out this week uh, or came out this last week as we're recording. So uh, that Mario and Rabbids Rayman DLC did come out. Um, and I, I read, uh, I think it was Nintendo Life's review of it. And they were bummed that Rayman doesn't just get added to like the roster of characters for the main game. It, it, he is just kind of uh, off in his own little uh, content pack that you play separate to that. Which, oh really? Yeah, is a little bit of a bummer. I agree, but uh, also they're saying like none of the the DLCs for this game quite hit the same high note as the Donkey Kong one for the first mm. game, yeah. um, which I can't speak to since I didn't play the first game or that DLC. But uh, I did like some of the stuff they added, like that Tower of Doom uh, thing. I thought that was like. Uh, a smart little like repeat repeatable thing that you could jump in and uh, get a sort of a Raymond or Mario and Rabbids uh, fix for. Uh, but then I, I didn't finish the other one. There was another DLC that added like a new biome to explore and some enemy to go take down. I, n- I never finished that. Uh, so I don't know. And with me being all in on Starfield at the moment, I don't know if jumping back in to just to play the Rayman stuff is really going to, uh, yeah. get me to come back at this point but um next up there was uh trying five a clockwork conspiracy Did, have, have you, you played, played a, a trying game i played trying four on stadia actually because it was a stadia pro title i didn't finish it but I, I started it and i thought it was uh pretty cool i actually have been playing this game though trying five. Oh, really yeah it's a really good co-op game uh yes i played i believe i played trying one and two i maybe played I played whatever. The, there's an awful one that people hate. Yeah, I've heard three is the bad one. Is, it, is three the bad one? I played trying three as well. I played it the way you're supposed to play it with two of my friends. Um, and it was very fun co-op. Uh, but I have not ever played trying four or this new trying five. But it seems very cool. It's like, um, what was that old Genesis game? Uh, the Lost Vikings. Did you ever play that? No. Was it Lost Vikings? Or maybe it was Three Vikings? Very similar in that there were three playable characters and each of them had like a different set of skills and you used them to like solve puzzles and do combat and stuff. Um But yeah, I watched a I watched like IGN's review of this and I was like, man, this looks great. I have fond memories of uh playing one through three. It is very fun, I have to say. Uh, it, it, like you said, it's like a side-scrolling game where you have access to like a wizard, a rogue, and a knight. And they each have different abilities, and you're using those abilities to get from point A to point B and solve little puzzles along the way. And occasionally there will be some combat. But it's like one of those games where it's like very the puzzles are very physics-based. And mm. so a lot of the time kind of similar to like solving a, a shrine in uh, breath of the wild or tears of the kingdom. You kind of feel like, I don't know if that's how they wanted me to, to solve this, but it worked. So I'm good <laughs> with it. And then, yeah. so it kind of makes you feel like really smart when you do figure it out, but uh, really good uh, mechanically, very fun to play in co-op. Uh, so it's a pretty high recommendation, even though I've not finished it, but I've played some of it. Uh, and then I don't know anything about this, but Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis came out on mobile. Yeah. Do you, do you know what this is? I think it's just a re- it's a retelling of Final Fantasy VII again. I've actually seen some screenshots of this because I, on TikTok, uh, I've, 
every once in a while we'll get people playing this game and being like, this is insane because you, a crazy thing about it is, uh, it kind of has, so it, like normally it has like, uh, kind of dumbed down graphics, but there are some like high resolution, uh, almost Final Fantasy seven remake esque graphics at times. Uh, and I saw a bunch of, you can get a bunch of crazy costumes for Red 13, uh, that make him look very dumb. And that's mainly the discourse I've been seeing about it. Um, but I think, yeah, I think it's just like a retelling of Final Fantasy seven. Uh, what, what on is the mobile. gameplay? <laughs> I think it's just the same. I think it's just the same thing. Of Final Fantasy seven. It's just, Do you a, have a like port, virtual controls and. I think so. I, I I don't maybe I don't know enough about it, but I did I did see those red thirteen screenshots and I was like that and that looks crazy because you uh you can give him like a full you almost give him like a full like leather face kind of a thing <laughs> where he's like fully wrapped in like black rubber, um, but yeah I I, I maybe I, I actually maybe don't know as much as I think I know about this as I'm looking this up maybe it's not a full retelling of Final Fantasy seven. I thought I had seen something about it where it was a retelling of Final Fantasy VII, but maybe, yeah, I don't know enough about it to comment. I just thought yeah. it was interesting that some sort of Final Fantasy thing came out this week and nobody's talking about it, but oh, yeah, I, I, mean, I guess it is a mobile field. game, so. Yeah. Uh, and then another game that came out is Fay Farm, which is like some sort of cozy uh, Stardew Valley meets Animal Crossing type of a game. Mm. that I'm sure will be very popular with the crowd that likes that type of game. Actually, I actually haven't seen any reviews for this. I've seen a couple of YouTube videos that got recommended to me of people being like, oh, this is really fun to play with friends and stuff. Um, speaking of Stardew Valley, it's not in our show notes, but Concerned Ape, the, the sole developer of Stardew Valley, did this week release a screenshot of his new game, The Haunted Chocolatier, which has some significance because i think it has uh, a character from stardew valley in it possibly so they might be a shared universe but oh really um he's still working away on that game very excited to check that out whenever it does come out but who knows he's on his own schedule and has infinite money basically from releasing stardew valley on everything so he's yeah. taking his time well, in between that and like just constant updates and add-on content for Stardew Valley, he's yeah. keeping very busy. So. He's a rock star. He is an inspiration. He's just like constantly like I still follow him on Twitter, and he's constantly like, "Hey guys, uh, here's this patch going out. We're aware of this one problem." He like he's still very actively helping people out and developing Star. Or, uh, I keep wanting to say Starfield. Uh, Starfield Stardew Valley. Valley. <laughs> yeah, Starfield Valley. Now that's the game. There you go. Um. But yeah, he seems like a great guy, and I'm very excited for Haunted Chocolatier, whatever that comes out. And then uh, the other games that came out uh, this week is Starfield and Baldur's Gate 3. Both came out uh, on the same day. So Baldur's Gate 3 finally got its console release. It's been out on PC yes. for quite some time now. But uh, yeah, uh, a huge week and maybe two weeks worth of games there. Yeah. Where there were just like a ton of stuff that came out. Like people are still really into that armored core game as well. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's going to be hard to top this year <laughs> when it it's comes true. to looking at just all the big releases that have really uh, blown people away. But especially if Silk Song comes out this year, I don't think it will. But <laughs> I don't think it will. I hope, I pray that it won't. I was going to say, you got enough on, on your plate right now. So. Uh, would you drop everything for it if it like say they are like hey hot drop this is coming out next week would you like drop everything for it i think i would i i i'm really liking starfield but i have i have not gotten into a good groove with it yet we'll talk about it in a little bit um but i am not like fully in it yet i feel like i've just been doing stuff to prepare to be in it um so if it can if it was going to come out on like tuesday i mean the thing about Hollow Knight that I really liked, and I, I don't have enough uh, like self-control to do this as much, but if I played Silk Song right away, it would force me to do this, is that I tried not to like look at guides for Hollow Knight, and that ended up being very rewarding. And if I played Silk Song right away where like there were no guides, I think I would also feel very rewarded. But 
Also something we'll talk about in a little bit, what I've been playing watching. I did dip my toes into Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which has like wet my appetite for that type of game. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I think I would definitely be playing Silk Song day one, even if it meant that I had to press pause on Starfield for a while. Man, I, yeah, I was going to ask if you would played anything else on your, your new Xbox that you have. But- yeah, I... I had not played any more Planet of Lana. I I got fully into that. Um, uh, what was that inside game? Um, oh, Somerville. Yes. Uh, fully beat that. That was great. Played a lot of Planet of Lana, but I kind of just like dropped off of that because Starfield came out, and I just started playing that. But and then Ori and the Will of the Wisps, I did play a little bit, but um, we'll talk about it in a little bit. But is it time to talk about Starfield? I think it is. It's time to dive right into Starfield. How have you been liking it? Uh, I've been really liking it. I mean, there are like maybe a few little pain points, but otherwise it is like nice to be into like a Bethesda like yeah. sandbox RPG. Um, what? So what was the, the background and traits that you chose? I believe I did something that is like space scoundrel or like star scoundrel or something. It's the one that is pistols, persuasion, and piloting because I think I want to do mostly pistols in this game. Pistols and shotguns, maybe. Uh, And then persuasion, I heard, is very important, although I still don't really understand the persuasion system. And piloting, I want to get up to having those like high tier class C or whatever, uh ships which i think are very cool i want to have a very big ship i think yeah um you definitely want a lot of cargo space that's for sure um you did which one did you do i did the ronin which i am a little bit kicking myself for because i i initially was like oh this has like stealth and um maybe it was persuasion or maybe it was like uh i forget what what the third one was the the other one was like melee weapons and i like i had done a playthrough of skyrim where you had like big two-handed weapons and so Mm. i like basically was a two-handed warrior in that game (laughs) and i was like oh that was actually a really fun combat experience and i normally when i played skyrim i would did like the stealth like bow and arrow type of a character but the two-handed warrior i remember being extremely fun because you get like some crazy abilities and stuff like that too but and so i was like maybe if i like try to play this game that way it'll be like really fun too and so far i've not really happened upon interesting melee weapons at all like i've gotten a couple of knives and like some swords but like I have not found the melee combat to be that fun or interesting. Mm. And most of the time, like using the ranged weapons, it it has been much better anyway. So I've a little bit like pivoted and gone more in the direction of like different skills. Uh, Like I still am using persuasion a lot. And I I don't remember if I I really can't remember the third skill, but I I have done a lot of with like lock picking, which that mini game I did not understand at first, but I now still that don't I, understand it. Oh, really? Now that I understand it, I actually really like it. Uh, I like I it better like, than like some of the other uh, lock picking mini games and uh, Bethesda games. Maybe I'm just blind to it, or I I don't know what I'm not seeing. But I feel like every time I do it, there is a ring that I'm not expecting that appears. You um, can see all the rings from the start. Yeah, that's what I that's what I think, but I for some reason I'm like, okay, there's only two rings, but then there's always like three or four rings and I'm like, where did these rings come from? Really? I don't know. I I probably am just not looking at it correctly, but I've never failed one is the thing. I I always <laughs> am successful, so I don't know. When I, I first know. started, I didn't understand what I was supposed to be doing, so I failed like maybe the first two, and I was like, "Okay, I need to like look this up because I'm clearly not understanding this." And mm. now that I like understand it, um, I've had it's been pretty good. I've been able to clear all of them, and it hasn't been a problem. But uh, yeah, I need to. I'm sure there's a very succinct YouTube video I can watch that will resolve all my issues. Yeah, you just like if I think if the circle is blue 
depending on which which digi pick you're using it's like this one's could work for this circle and if it's white like that's not going to work it's probably for one of the like inner circles hmm. and you have like a bunch of different digi picks that you can use and you can like tab through them by hitting like the shoulder button and i didn't realize that at first which is why when i first tried it i was like super confused i couldn't figure out why i was failing it because i didn't understand that you could actually tab through them mm-hmm. but uh now that i know that it's like it's not been a problem at all but <laughs> uh you can also like auto do it where it will like help you out by auto placing some digi picks and get you to the, like the next ring or whatever and then i think you can also undo if you like used a digi pick that you probably needed for one of the inner circles but you used mm-hmm. it on an outer circle but yeah it gets more complicated the higher up uh like there's expert or there's like advanced or an expert and like master or whatever and as you go up like there are more rings and so you kind of have to like look ahead a little bit more on mm. uh, which ring it, or which digi pick is used for which ring but yeah i i, don't, I kind of like the system actually i i definitely like it better than the like weird like uh, trying to hold down the pens and like the elder scrolls games or yeah uh f- trying to feel out the vibration on like the um the fallout games but but yeah, uh, it is weird though that they they've gone like that's the the way you hack computers and the way you open doors. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, they just made like one hacking system instead of having two different ones. But it's a solid system, so I like that. Uh, what level are you? I believe I'm level seven, and I want to talk about this. I have a gripe with the game. Okay, I did a mission called into the unknown, which I've talked to you about. And I texted you about it when I was happening because I was very frustrated, but part of this mission, the final part of this mission, you have to go do sort of like a bunch of different planets. It's, it's, it's a fairly long quest line where you're like collecting pieces of the artifact. Um, the final part of it is you drop down on this planet and you have to, it's basically just like, Hey, follow your scanner. There's anomalies. It'll just follow your scanner. So I dropped down on this planet the first time and I was looking around and my scanner was not, nothing was happening. I Googled like what's supposed to happen and uh, you're the outer ring of your scanner is supposed to like fluctuate, but I could not get that to happen. So I was like, okay, that's not happening for me. I'll just walk around. So I walked around, I walked like to the edge of the map and I found an anomaly. I found like two more anomalies in different directions and all throughout this, there are, like, big a- bug aliens that are just, like, hassling you. So, for, like, an hour, I would just run until I was almost in, like, carbon dioxide shock or whatever. Stop running. A bunch of aliens would attack me. I would wait for my oxygen to refill. Keep running. Find an anomaly. Not the right anomaly. I can't scan this anomaly, so I don't know what I'm doing. And then I'd see another anomaly on the horizon. Go to that one. Rinse and repeat. And I hated it. <laughs> uh, so then I was like, well, maybe if I come back. So I'll, I launched my ship. I was in orbit. I came back. Now my thing did start to fluctuate. But again, I sent you a picture of this. Like all of the, like the anomalies were not in any sort of like, uh, direction. Basically there was no vector. It was putting, pushing me towards. They were just, there was one to the north, one to the east, one to the south. So I was just going around doing this. Also, <laughs> Like when I watched YouTube videos of this, because I was like, this has to be solved. And I, a bunch of them were just like, oh, you just got to do it this way. And it will like tell you how to go. But I think mine was bugged. But in all the YouTube videos I watched, it was like nice summertime on this planet. And for me, it was winter for some reason. I think it was was winter for me as well. Yeah, I was getting like hypothermia and some other status effect, which I did not have anything to solve. Uh, So like I was losing health. It was miserable. And eventually I found a YouTube video. I was on this planet for like two hours and (laughs) I have like six and a half hours in this game. So like a good third of this game, I was on this planet uh, that I played so far. Um, But eventually I, this is a good tip. Um, I, it was this YouTube video by this child who I think just like doesn't have a microphone. He was just recording it on his like laptop microphone. Um, And he was like, Hey, here's what you do. 
uh, like hop into your ship, like you're going to take off and it'll be a third person on your ship and then just pan around because you're so high up because you're in a third person perspective for your ship. Uh, you all, you can like see stuff on the horizon and sure enough, I panned a little bit and I immediately saw the big tower I was supposed to go to. So I hopped out of my ship, made a beeline for something that wasn't even making my scanner vibrate for whatever reason. It was just like, I was going in a direction that it would not have told me to go in. Um, and I found it and I was able to do it, but I was extremely frustrated. Um, but I think that's mainly because it was for some reason bugged. I initially thought like, oh, this is very poorly designed, but um, maybe my game just was like bugged for that reason. So, cause you yeah, said you didn't have as much trouble on that quest. I, I had some trouble, but not that much trouble. Like I, it, it was not clear to like, I knew I was supposed to be looking at the distortion on the scanner to, and like kind of following that, like a guide as to where I was supposed to go. But like, I encountered like two or three of those like anomalies that were not, it was supposed to like be leading you along a path basically. And like, I was constantly being harassed by those uh, animals as well. And, yeah. and some of it was because like, my, I forget which my follower was at the time, but they kept shooting at him. So more would come over as so I would have to deal with them. And I kept like jumping around those things because they were a little bit lined in a, such a way that they were like stairs. So you could jump across them. And I was like, am mm. I supposed to like climb this? Is it like the thing I'm looking for at the top of this? And so I kept like trying to figure out how to get up there and it didn't work. Uh, and so I was like, eventually I realized, oh, the scanner's getting distorted off in this direction too. So I would start going that way. Uh, and so I kind of followed a little bit along a straight line, uh, but I, it was not becoming clear, like in any direction I looked that I was, you know, getting closer to the thing I was looking for. And then eventually I just kept like looking around and trying to follow the, the distortion and eventually i got to the place i needed to be but it was like it it did take longer than i thought it should have and i was just on that planet it was just like shooting bugs and like trying to figure out where the scanner was telling me to go and so i, I, think, I a little bit agreed with you that like this was just like painfully designed in a way that was like meant to frustrate but i don't think it i mean i don't think i would have that much of an issue with it if it was like a side quest that was just like oh at the end of this i'll get a cool gun or something or like a bunch of credits but this is a main plot line and like it's main it's part of the main story and it is a gate between you and getting you know something that is pretty much a big spoiler but a, a big part of the game that they have not really talked about because it's kind of a spoiler and you can't get it unless you do this. I mean, I think not super well thought out mission. Yeah, I well, so ordinarily when you pull up the scanner, it'll give you like little arrows that'll point you in the direction you're supposed to go towards whatever objective you're tracking at the yeah. time. And for this mission, it didn't do that specifically yeah. because it wanted you to follow the distortion on the ring. And for whatever reason, it like wasn't super clear uh, like which direction you're supposed to be looking which like i was like if i got turned around here and i was sort of halfway between two of these anomalies would like would it distort in both directions i would not be able to figure out where i was supposed to go but um not to like spoil things i don't know if you want to talk about like what you let's get do it Wait, i mean why not yeah we can because I, I feel like most of the people who super care about this stuff are well beyond this point by now. But yeah, uh, so basically you get your first uh, like space magic power yeah. from doing this mission. Uh, and I was telling you that like once you do that, that Vladimir guy will just like hand you a handful of other little secondary missions to go find more of those. So you basically can keep adding additional powers uh, and the one that I I've gone and grabbed a few of them. I haven't grabbed all of the ones that I think are available to me just yet. But um, the one that I have been using a lot is one that allows you to like basically spot humans like sort of through uh, terrain and like walls and things like that. It basically oh. highlights all humans for like a, a short amount of time so you can kind of figure out where the enemies are. If you're like going through a building and taking out enemies. Mm -hmm. um, so that one's super cool and super useful. But I think there's also one that like gives you your own personal 
like atmosphere. So like if you're running and you've run out of stamina and so now you're like O2 is going down or whatever, you can just like activate that and it basically replenishes your stamina. And so you basically can run infinitely while that's going on without it going down. That sounds so great. That one also seems super useful, especially if you're like encumbered at the time. Yeah. But uh, I didn't ask what what traits did you pick? You know, I not a lot of them were not. I didn't want to do a lot of them. I have to say, <laughs> um, so I only picked one. Actually, there's always a negative uh, that goes along with the trait. So even though there's like you get something positive out of it, yeah. you also have to deal with some sort of negative. I almost picked the one where you're like a solo player, where like you get benefits if you don't have a companion. But then I was like. Well, maybe there's going to be a hard mission where I'm going to want a companion. So I don't want to get locked out of doing that. Um, yeah. And then I was like, well, maybe I'll pick the companion one. But then I was like, well, maybe I want to do solo sometimes. But the one I ended up doing is I wanted to be a neon street rat. Uh, just because I, I have watched videos of people hanging around neon and it looks very cool. I haven't gotten neon yet, but that's the only background trait I picked. Uh, just because I feel like I'm going to hang out there a lot. Yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff to do there. Um, I did the Ryujin Industries faction quest mm. on Neon. Basically, I, I like I didn't know it was a faction quest. I like was on New Atlantis and I like interacted with one of the terminals there, and it was like, "Hey, here's some information about New Atlantis. Also, here's an ad for like you know a job. Do you want to apply?" And so I applied for it. And it was like. <laughs> go to neon and like do an interview or whatever. I was like, this is so crazy that like, <laughs> this is how you start a quest line. Yeah. And so I went there and it's like a really fun, interesting quest line that is like corporate espionage basically. Ooh. So you use a lot of skills other than combat for that one. Like you use persuasion and like lock picking and uh, stealth a lot. And at first, like for half of that quest line, I was a little bit disappointed in the stealth mechanics Mm -hmm. because like for the first half of it, it's like you have to go into this like corporate office and like hack this computer or like download some file or something like that. And I was like, okay, well, that's going to be hard. I'm going to have to really use my stealth skill here. And I haven't really put too many points into it, but you really don't. You just walk in there and they just like, everybody <laughs> looks at you like, hey man, what's up? And you just like, oh, here's the the computer. I'm just going to walk behind the desk and crouch. And when it says hidden at the top, I'll just like re- uh, interact with the computer and it'll be fine. And so for a long time, I was like, man, the, the stealth mechanics in this game feel like a step back from even like Skyrim. Mm. Because in Skyrim, if you went into a shop and like white run or uh like a, a one of the taverns if you walked into the back room the person minding the shop would like walk back there and be like hey you're not supposed to be back here what's going on here mm-hmm. like i don't want to not watch you while you're like creeping around my back room because you might steal something and i was expecting at least that level of like having to sneak around in this game and for a lot of that quest line it's that is just not a thing you're just like allowed to (laughs) have free reign of walking around like these corporate offices or like warehouses that are you know you would think would be protected in some way like even if there's a security guard there they'll just kind of look at you and be like hey what's up and you're just allowed (laughs) to do whatever you want and but then like later on there are actual places that you you're supposed to go that are like no these are restricted areas if you're if you're seen there people will immediately become hostile to you so you do actually have to start stealthing around so mm-hmm. it's kind of a mix of good and bad when it comes to the stealth stuff because there are actual places where stealth is required um and then there are other places that are you would think stealth would be required but it's not <laughs> so it's kind of weird i was surprised that you don't even get a stealth meter until you put one point into stealth. Yeah. There's a lot of weird stuff like that. Like you can't pickpocket people until you put one point into the pickpocket skill, basically. And same with like the jet, the jump pack, like you can't use your jump pack until you put a point into it. 
it's really weird because you would think that those would just be to like upgrade them or make it you more proficient in using them but mm. no you can't do it you can't even do it at all until you have a point <laughs> in there which is weird but now i on all of the tip videos i've seen because i have watched a lot of them because i had to sort of just look from the outside in while you were playing and i had to wait until wednesday in all of those videos uh they were like hey de- don't forget to go down into the basement of the lodge and uh grab this spacesuit because it's broken right now and they haven't patched it uh did you do that no i have missed this tip altogether if you go down into the basement of the lodge there's like crafting benches and whatnot and there is a um a glass case with a pretty good uh uh suit in it like astronaut suit what am i thinking of a uh, spacesuit um of like armor a suit of armor basically uh, and if you look at it just the right way, you can kind of look between the planes of gla- uh, panes of glass and just like grab it, <laughs> and it's just yours because <laughs> it's behind like a master locked thing. But oh. for whatever reason, it, the panes of glass are just like slightly big enough where you can angle yourself to look directly in between them, and then your your the UI will be like, "Hey, do you, are you are you looking to open this? Or are you looking to?" take this armor and you can just say i'm taking look and take this armor um <laughs> and you can just take it off the mannequin and you just have it i wonder if that's supposed to be like a late main story reward of some sort and you're just able to grab it early <laughs> i don't know but i have it and it's been great <laughs> well so there's uh i i know they give you like a constellation armor set and yeah. that one in the early game was like super useful to like switch to on when you were on cold planets like we talked about before because it had like pretty decent like thermal mm-hmm. uh, attributes to it, so I, I found even though I was using like another armor set for like uh, combat, when I was just out exploring some worlds, I would like swap to that one. But what's your uh, favorite companion so far? I have so I was with Vasco, obviously, and then I was with Sarah Morgan. The only other one, so I briefly went to uh, Mars and talked to a guy part as part of that mission. And at the end of that mission, I was like, "Hey, you know, I'm looking for people to hang out with." And he was like, "Oh, all right, well, uh, come, maybe I got to finish up some stuff, but I'll see you back on Mars, maybe." So I know that I can collect that guy. But after that, I started hanging out with that Alexandra or whatever her name is, the Russian lady. Andrea? Yeah, yeah, her. Because, again, that was part of that Into the Unknown mission. And at one point, she was just like, I think I'd like to travel with you more. And I didn't realize that I was doing this, but I was basically just like, yeah, fine, come with me. And then Sarah Morgan was just put in the back burner, and I did not see her anymore. <laughs> and I just, yeah, like, it traveled. does that for a while. Like, there's, like, a main quest, and they're like, here's a companion. They're going to follow you for this mission. And then you, like, do the next one, and it's like, here's a different one. They're going to join you. And so you, you feel like you're swapping out companions, like, with every main mission for, for a little I didn't even while. realize... I did it, and then I was like, okay, I'm done with this conversation. I'm going to fast travel to the next planet. And I did, and then I turned around, and she was just standing there. I was like, oh, I guess we're hanging out now. I guess you're following me now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she's been fine. I like that she has like a, she's got like a laser pistol, which seems to be good, but I have not, yeah, I mean. You, I, you can equip them with stuff, too. Like, you, you can check, like, their traits or what they're good at, and, like, equip them with a better weapon and what i from what i understand is as long as you give them like one bullet and one grenade they will basically have infinite ammo and grenades great um which is cool and then you can also give them like better armor and different outfits as well because some of the outfits that you can find will be like plus five health or whatever so they will last a little bit longer in combat as well so I need to do more of that, but I'm aware that that's a, a thing in the game. I, I think to... overall, though, I think Vasco is my favorite just because I like how cool he looks. And I think yeah. eventually I will go and grab him again. So w- what I like about Vasco is I like having him assigned to my ship because he has like some good traits for like when you're in space combat. Oh, really? I think. And I think like he and Sam, I think, are like my two main guys aboard my ship for like space combat. So I have them specifically assigned to the ship. And the nice thing about that with Vasco is he just like every time you land and walk out of your ship, he just like walks out there with you and just like stands there guarding the ship. 
That's great. Uh, even if he's not your like companion that's going to follow you around. So he'll be there. And if you get into to combat near your ship, he'll just like join you. And so you basically have two companions helping you fight off enemies. That's a good tip. We sh- I will yeah. uh, I will activate that when I play again. Yeah, and so like when you're even when you land on like New Atlantis, if you want to like dump some uh, some of the stuff you're carrying uh, into his inventory, you can do that pretty easily too. Uh, so yeah, I, I have made Sam and Vasco. I think I have four people that I can have on my ship because I've upgraded my ship. I actually have three ships. I should ask, have, how many ships do you have? Just the I just one? got the one. I I have you done any customization? with it yeah no not really not yet so the the customization i did uh for the base ship was i like added i looked up some video about like because i i at first didn't understand the customization how, how to do it but like it, it seems a little intimidating at first but once you kind of get into it it's not that bad and i looked up a video i think it was like boomstick gaming like basically uh did a video that was like basic um like good build to for starters with your your first ship and just things that you can like add on to it to as like quality of life like a little bit more cargo you know upgrading your your weapons and then like adding on some habs so that you have like the different workbenches on your mm-hmm. ship mm-hmm. um and making sure that you also have like a bed that you can sleep in because every time you you sleep in a bed even for like an hour you get that well rested bonus yeah. that gives you like a 10 percent xp bonus for a little while um so i i have the starter ship and then i did that mantis quest line have you heard about this yes i'm gonna do that as well but i'm gonna wait until i'm maybe a little i heard it if it's good to do if you're a little higher level because yeah, uh, the I, enemies I are a little the, hard i think the enemies you run into are like around level 20 so yeah. uh, just like use that as sort of a, a marker for where you should be level wise um and then but that's a really cool little quest um, i'm excited to do that yeah yeah, so you should do that one because you get some good stuff out of that. And then I did the the we already talked about it, the the free star ranger quest line. You get some some cool stuff. Actually, we might have talked about it before we started recording. But the free star ranger quest line, you get like a really cool pistol, which I know yeah, you were. That's very next on my about. list. I want that big revolver. Yeah, it's very cool. Uh, and then you also get like a suit of armor slash space suit. They're, they're kind of combined, like spacesuit slash armor uh, in this game. But you you get one uh, for the Freestar Ranger quest line. You also get like a, a regular outfit from the Freestar Rangers that I forget what bonuses you get while wearing that. And then you get um, a ship at the very end of it. And the ship is very cool and it's very good. So there are different quest lines that just give you ships for free. So I've never felt the need to buy one. <laughs> um, although you can do that. Um, I also, so one of the traits I picked was that dream home one. So I just have yeah. like a free house that I can go to. Well, not free. I had to pay, pay off the mortgage basically, which I already did. Cause I feel like the game throws money at you like crazy. So yeah, I'm getting I've, a ton. I'm getting I've, to the point where like the encumbrance is an issue and I feel like we don't need that anymore in video games, but yeah, I have just like. I will now pick and choose. I don't pick up everything. I'll pick up something if it has like a value of over a hundred and I don't really pick up guns anymore because they just like take up way too much space and they, I don't sell them for that much. If it's like a modded gun that has like, it's like legendary or something, I'll pick it up. But like, uh, I feel like I have a ton of money and I haven't spent money on anything yet. Yeah. I, it's really easy to end up with a lot of money, especially if you're not doing like the big ship customization stuff. That's how you end up, eating up a lot of your money is, right. is when you're ship building or outpost building. Um, I also did like, I, I would just to figure out what to do with it. I did like make a, my first outpost, but it's like Ooh. horrible and I probably will like get rid of it because <laughs> I didn't really understand what I was doing, but I was like, I just want to plop this down. So I have an outpost because I did, there's like a mission, you know how at the very start of the game, you're like a miner on this one place mm-hmm. and there's these two people that kind of work with you a little bit like later on you can go back there and there's like a little bit more of a mission to do there but you can basically add those two people to your crew so to speak but they're like 
their traits make them good at running outposts. So they're like oh, ideal candidates to like have um, assigned to an outpost that you've built. So I was like, well, I have these two people. Let me just like drop down an outpost here. But I, I didn't realize that um, the best way to go about that would be to find a planet that has like some good or like rare uh, minerals of some sort. And then find a location that has like basically two adjacent spots that you can mine mm. like two things at once yeah. uh, and then drop your outposts and start dropping those like drilling things and throw some stuff down and then assign those people to run the outpost. Uh, right now, I it's like just a cobalt farm is what it is. And I don't <laughs> know of anything that I need cobalt for. So I might as well just sell it, I guess. But uh, so that was my... A thing I learned uh, just through experimenting with like the outpost building, but I've really not done much with that. I don't know how much I really care that about outpost building, but uh, I have gone more into like weapon crafting, and I kind of want to do more with like the suit, like the armor upgrade uh, crafting as well. Mm-hmm. And for that, there are like these gates where you have to like go to the research terminal and make sure that you have like researched the like mod crafting for those things. And then you have to like you have to put points into your research ability. You have to put points into both the weapon and the armor uh, crafting and then you have to have all of the materials. So it's kind of a lot of things that you have to have all at once to be able yeah. to do any of that stuff. So uh, it is cool, though. I do like being able to craft weapon upgrades. Uh, like I have been able to to upgrade my weapons in pretty cool ways. Or like I'll find a weapon that already has some and then I'll just add some more things onto it. Um, so I've done more of that than I have actually upgrading any of the weapon specific uh, skill tree skills Mm -hmm. but you told me that you're doing more of like the weapon upgrades uh for your skills i'm going i think i'm gonna go mostly pistols and shotguns i every time i see and like a bunch of clips of like ign has put up and stuff they have a very cool looking double barreled shotgun uh that i just really want um so i'm gonna i've been putting most of my points into pistols and ballistics and then i did one in stealth just so i could have a stealth meter uh, I did a boost packs one and I did a piloting and I did weightlifting. Cause again, the encumbrance yeah. I feel like is way <laughs> too low. And so, and I, I was able to like rank that up super fast because I was on that planet for yeah. two hours <laughs> running around. So I ran a thousand meters or whatever when I was like 75% encumbered very quickly. Um, but yeah, I'm. I have not found a shotgun yet. Again, I think I've. I I'm, oh, I'm really? about to start branching off. I, I did. I've only been doing main story stuff, and now that I have my first power, I'm gonna just not do the main story for a long time, and hopefully get some more diverse equipment. But because I've mostly yeah. just been finding grindles and uh, various pistols that I don't need, so. Yeah, I um, like that it, it in some ways kind of feels like, you know, how Destiny had that thing where they're like, here are all the weapon foundries and they're kind of themed to these different things. Well, in Starfield, they have something somewhat similar where if you go to Aquila, I think it is, where like the Freestar Rangers mm-hmm. are, they have like shops and stuff there where a lot of it is sort of like they have like the wooden handles and they kind of look like old earth weapons, but like Mm. a little bit more futuristic. Mm -hmm. And so you find a lot of that stuff there. And um, I think like I got the double barrel shotgun as well. And one of the ones that I found was like specifically more damage against animals. So while I was running around on that planet, trying to figure out how to use the scanner to figure out where to go to get the power, I was using that double barrel shotgun ton to take that out those great. animals and it was great um but yeah so they're, they're i really kind of like the design of the weapons in this game and i i like that i do too. um like the the aquila the the freestar rangers area or the freestar collective kind of feels like that sort of firefly old west futuristic type of a, a vibe and it's similar with their weapons that they they have there but then you have places like new Atlantis and neon where things seem way more futuristic. 
uh, but in like different ways from each other. Uh, so I thought that was cool. Um, have you run into any bugs at all? Other than the anomalies quest, which it was awful. I've talked at length about, I have not really run into any bugs. I don't think. Yeah. I mean, they talked about how it is like the most bug free of any Bethesda game right out of the gate. And I think I agree with that, but I have run into like, there is still, I think a little bit of jank to it. Yeah. I have had two hard crashes. Whoa. Um, but fortunately the game is so good about like auto saving and like, yeah. you know, it's a Bethesda game. So you quick save all the time, even yeah. if it's just to like save scum a conversation. But like, um, so I, I have not lost any progress from those crashes. I did have a funny one. Occasionally you'll, you'll run into like funny stuff or jank where like you'll go into your ship and like one of the crew members will be standing on a table <laughs> and you're just <laughs> like, what are you doing there? <laughs> Or like uh, you'll be you'll try to have a conversation with someone and like some other character will just be like photo bombing the conversation yeah, in the background. Yeah. Yeah. And like a really funny way. Um, but I also had one where uh, so Andreja has been following me. It's really weird that her name is you actually pronounce the J. I feel like it should be Andrea, but that in yeah. game they actually say Andreja. So but um she has like her default gear i think has it so that when she crouches she turns invisible um which i do i have had some jump packs that let me do that as well but i keep upgrading them when i find new stuff and so i don't have that right now but um it's a funny thing because occasionally she'll like stand up and the invis will go away but her head will remain invisible. <laughs> so she's just walking around with no, like I can't see her head. It's, oh. I can see the rest of her body, but not her head. Spooky. And it's really funny. Uh, so that's uh, one of the more consistent bugs that I have seen in the game, but it's not like game breaking by any means. It's just sort yeah, of I mean, I, hilarious. You, you've played more than me for sure, but I have not run into anything where I was like, other than this extremely frustrating quest, I have not run into yeah. anything that has like been game breaking. Have you found any skill magazines yet? No, I have found I found a bunch of like super expensive board games, though, that were like value 450 credits or something for just like a board game. (laughs) And I was like, I will sell these, I guess. Um, But no, I haven't found any skill magazines yet. Probably the most interesting items I've found have been weapons so far. Yeah, and there there are some weapons that are not like ballistic they're more like they stun people basically i have this one that's basically like a stun shotgun that i used quite heavily during the uh, rayujin industries one because there are Mm. some where it's like don't kill these people like get in get the information and sneak out hopefully don't get caught and also don't just go on a murder spree there and so (laughs) i used that a lot to like take out security guards um and you had to like charge it up so you would like hold down the the trigger to charge it up and then you Ooh. would shoot them and it would just be like a one shot stun and you'd be uh in the clear so like th- i guess there is even though they're like i think passive like there you can't do a pacifist run maybe but like no you can't they confirmed you have to kill at least some people yeah, but uh, having that gun that allows you to, like, stun people is in some ways, like, allowing you to be a little bit more pacifist, but you still have to stun them, I guess. But um, what else did I have in my notes that I wanted to talk about? Oh, companions are much better at keeping up with you, I have noticed. Like, I feel like in Skyrim and pre- and some of the previous Fallout games, it was all too easy to, like go a weird route and have your companion just like completely lose you Mm. such that you would have to like try to figure out where they ended up (laughs) later on. (laughs) Um, In this game, they are much better at following you because they also have jetpacks. So if you're like trying to jetpack around, they will also use one to try to follow you Uh, or they'll just like, you know, eventually figure out where you are and teleport to you. But, um, they also uh, have the uh, ability to like wait. So if you go talk to them and you're like, hey, wait here a minute, I need to go do some stealth stuff and you're going to mess it all up. So if you wait here, <laughs> I'll go deal with this and then I'll come back. 
and it will actually like pop up in your little activities like uh, a little mission that you can activate to be like find waiting companion or whatever oh. and so it'll basically lead you back to where they were so that you can go talk to them and be like hey come join me now again that's great so yeah there's some nice stuff like that um faction quest i have started the uc vanguard one which i think is a, a cool one so far i am not super far it, it's weird i need to look it up but it, i have come across the point where it's like the guy seemed to indicate that there were two possible directions i could go and there were two quests there but i am it was unclear to me if i chose one the other would end up being grayed out or something you get like locked that. out yeah uh, so I, I need to look that up before I proceed. I've been a little bit afraid to pursue that further, but um, we uh, did we talk about how the powers are like shouts? I think maybe we yes. did. Yes. Well, I think well we think we talked about that before we start recording. But yeah, you made that apt comparison that they really are they're the shouts of this game. Yeah. So I think you can collect more of them. Uh, also, uh, it's worth maybe getting into like previously we talked about how. Uh, the advice from a lot of reviewers was just mainline the main story, get into new game plus, and then carry on from there. And I think we're seeing a lot of pushback on that now, more recently, where some people have actually done that and regretted it. Mm. I think uh, the general advice now is to just play it like a Bethesda sandbox and don't, you know, don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't force the main story and get into new game plus uh, until you're actually ready to do that. Um, I uh, having not finished the main story, I can't speak to like what happens or why it would be good or bad to get into new game plus. But uh, I am uh, just basically playing it the way I would any other Bethesda game where I'm mm. trying to do everything. Um, and I've been really enjoying it. I do like that the new game plus will basically carry over your progression. So you can basically, I would assume, I think there's no level cap. So I think you can just eventually end Get up having skill. all the powers. Yeah. All the skills yeah. unlocked and, and leveled up and everything, which is very cool and enticing to me. Yeah. Um, but I, I've heard that it does reset like, all your ships and outposts and everything. And your money too, I think. Yeah, your money, your inventory, your relationship status with all the different companions. So you basically do reset all of that stuff, but your progression does carry forward. So mm. uh, I'm very curious to get there, but I don't want to rush it basically is where I'm at right now. Yeah, so. but I'm I'm liking it a lot. I'm going to play way more and next week we'll have much more to talk about because I'll have hopefully as much time not as much time but i'll have uh put in way more time so we can talk about some yeah. more deeper stuff faction quests get, and whatnot get more into the faction quest lines and maybe even some of the main quests if we do more of that but um real quick i want to so i i have been playing or in the will of the wisps off and on not as much since Star, i started playing starfield but i'm liking it i i don't know if it's gonna supersede hollow knight as my favorite metroidvania but it's been fun. I really like how beautiful it is. It looks beautiful yeah. on my TV because it's like super HDR. It's constantly sunset yeah. in that game. <laughs> yeah, the, it is very vibrant and very beautiful to look at for sure. Um, but I'm liking it. Uh, I don't know when the next time I'm going to boot it up is because, again, I'm just uh, hip deep in Starfield. But you know what else I did is I watched Avatar The Way of Water yesterday. Oh, really? How was it? I liked it. I thought it was fun and cool. We definitely, I mean, it's definitely something you should watch at home because I was able to take breaks. Yeah, it's like three hours long. and 12 minutes long. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it was good. I, I liked it. I, I don't super like some of the characters, but it was visually just a masterpiece and I was enthralled. So those yeah, are that, two things. I didn't watch this one, but that was basically how I felt about the first one. I was so enthralled by just the visual spectacle yeah. of the first one when I watched it in theaters back when, when it came out. But then I went back to it again, and uh, you focus m less on the spectacle and more on like the story and characters. And I was, uh, I walked away from it the second time, feeling l way less like high on that movie yeah. the second time. So I wonder if that's something that would be similar with this one, because I've heard the story is relatively similar to the first movie as yeah. well. 
but yeah, I mean, it's 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 actually very similar. But again, the the visuals are just it's crazy to watch and be like, what part of this is CG? Because it can't all be CG, but sometimes it is all CG, and it's like it's very well done. Mm. Well, on that note, uh, you got any parting wisdom? Play Starfield. Play Starfield. I I'm loving it for sure. Uh, yeah. Like aside from the the little bit of frustration with that one quest that was yeah. uh, kind of difficult to figure out what you're supposed to do. Uh, aside from that, I am really loving the game. I've been playing it obsessively. I'm very addicted to it and just want to keep going with it. Uh, so it is definitely up there for me this year. I we haven't talked. Uh, where we will eventually put it on our game of the year watch or top 10 builder that we have. Uh, but once we put more time into it, I feel like we'll be able to start talking about that as well. Mm-hmm. So uh, on that note, go ahead and follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter at Starside Cafe. Uh, leave this podcast a rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, and we'll catch you on the next one. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.